I'm Dr Jane Draper. I'm a lecturer in classics at the University of Wales, Trinity St David. My research expertise is in the history and archaeology of medicine, and I am currently working on a project researching natural resources in skincare in antiquity and the modern world. The thing about ancient medicine that I'm particularly interested in is what Roy Porter described as medicine from below. I'm interested in real people with real physical and mental ailments and how they dealt with those ailments. So I'm interested in um, self-care, self-help, what people knew and what they put into practice themselves. Because the focus in the history of medicine is, is quite frequently on the physician, on the professional medical practitioner, and the patient rather gets um, ignored or, 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 or sort of dismissed um, as, as being a sort of rather passive receptacle of, of the professional's knowledge. This project is about looking at the natural resources utilised in ancient skincare preparations and what we can learn from them and how we can potentially utilise them today. In ancient Greece, ancient Rome, nobody used any natural resource for no good reason. There, there was a very good rationale behind it, behind what the, the plant or the mineral was thought to actually do for you. So what we're hoping to achieve is to look at these ancient recipes for the skincare preparations, try and understand what was put into them, why it was put into them, and see if there's any truth to any of this, to see if any of these uh, plants or minerals have properties that were useful in antiquity and can be useful today. There are lots of examples, uh, particularly in the, in the last sort of five or ten years, uh, various different research teams have been looking at particular substances. So honey, for example, um, manuka honey particularly, but, but honey more generally in the last few years has been uh, used and well found to be very good for um, things like MRSA. Um, onion and garlic recently, um, ancient Anglo-Saxon remedies containing those things have been found to be effective as well. So yes, there's a lot of interest in modern contemporary scientists looking at ancient well, substances that were, that were used at various points in, in the past to see um, if there is something to it and if we can, if we can sort of find that. So we're, we're looking at things used specifically for skin care rather than more generally. It's ironic really that the things that people, women mainly, but, but some men were putting on their skin to try and make it pale, try and make it smooth, were actually achieving uh, quite the opposite. Um, potentially damaging their skin very much. So yes, there are substances like lead uh, that, that were recommended for, for ancient cosmetics, ancient skincare, but we are more interested in the other substances. Things like um, ancient face packs frequently had barley um, in them, something like that, which is both, I suppose, and you, know, you could exfoliate your skin with it, but it also has other properties that would supposedly uh, benefit your skin, make it glow. Um, things like animal fats as well, um, they would moisturise um, plants to uh, roses, for example. Um, and a lot of these, a lot of these properties, or a lot of these substances, are currently used in in cosmetics and in skincare. Uh, so you you do find uh, there's been a sort of a trend in the last few years towards botanics, natural substances, organics, um, and so there are already quite a few substances being utilised, but we're sort of looking to see what else we can find. The, the academic research into ancient recipes and the scientific analysis of the substances and, and ancient, ancient products that survive in, in containers, that's only one part of the project. Another part is looking at how these products have been packaged and marketed as well. Um, so we're working with the Boots Archive and the Royal Pharmaceutical Society Library and Museum to have a look at, particularly the, the 18th and 19th centuries, early 20th as well, to see how skincare 
was marketed, how, how the ancient world and the idea of ancient wisdom and, and ancient beauty, how that was utilised to try and sell products. So yes, there, there will be opportunities uh, to, to delve into archives and museum collections of the more recent past as well as the ancient past. I teach modules relating to my research interests, uh, undergraduate and postgraduate modules in ancient medicine specifically, but I also teach modules that deal with daily life, uh, literature and archaeology in the ancient world. So certainly my research will find its way into my teaching as far as course content is concerned, but there will also be the opportunity for students to do uh, work experience in, in the Boots archives particularly, but uh, also um, possibly the Royal Pharmaceutical Society's uh, archives and museum and library. So there's a sort of practical component to it as well.